Hello, hello, and glory to God in the highest. What a week and what a day that God has made for us. It's times of miracle. In times of miracle, is a platform where we trust God for breakthrough for our viewers. I'm praying for you today. God will not pass you by that thing. You've been trusting God for today is the day of answer in your life in Jesus Christ's name. I pray for healing in your body. I pray for financial release upon your life. I pray for answer in every area that you are seeking God for. In the name of Jesus, it's your week of greatness and success to the glory and praise of God's name. Welcome and God bless you richly for tuning in today to the praise of his name. Amen. I want to urge you to kindly share this video and let God's word spread everywhere. Spread the gospel. Spread the good news of the kingdom. Let's saturate the atmosphere with the presence of God. And when you learn to do that, you'll be seeing the manifestation of God in your life in every area in the name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God bless you and I'm so glad to be here today to share the good news that God has in store for us. Great truths and great things are in store for us today as we watch and as we stay tuned to this broadcast. God bless you. All my social media platform are displaying on your screen so that you can interact with me and let's do the things of God together. Amen and amen. For your online giving, the details are showing on the screen right now. Give a seed, give an offering, give a tithe unto God. And I should do so, I pray for a release upon your life. Let God give you that breakthrough that you so desire. Give you that capital, that money, that favor in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. I'm so delighted. Apostle Sam is my name and I'm your host on today's broadcast as God bless us in Jesus Christ's name. I want to show us something how to break limit and breaking embargoes in our life. And we are taking a case study, you know, in the Bible today. But before we get into all of that, let's pray to God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, speak through me today. Let your spirit take over. Let everyone be touched, be revitalized in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let there be a breakthrough a release in the life of people today. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray and I believe. Amen. And the church will say a big amen. Glory to God. What a day and what a time in God's presence. In Genesis chapter 27, uh, verse 36 to verse 37, I'm talking on breaking embargoes and lifting up limitations that are placed upon you. There are people who are suffering under embargo and limitations. They try everything possible and they don't break through. They don't break forth. These are signs that embargoes and limitations are placed upon you. I don't know who has placed embargo and limitation on you. I don't know what has been resisting you. I don't know what has been stopping you. You know in your heart that you are supposed to climb to the next level. You know, you can feel it. You can see that this is what you are supposed to do. But for some reasons you can't explain, you are not able to do them. Today, I break that embargo by fire. I remove that limitation of your life. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says no enchantment, no divination fashioned against Jacob shall prosper. Numbers 23, 23. I break every enchantment, every divination, any limitation and embargo resting on your life. 
resting on your advancement, resting on your progress and on your effort, they are broken up by the power of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. We saw in Genesis 27 to, to I mean verse 36 to 37, how Esau lost the birthright, lost the blessing. It all started in Genesis about 25. Verse 23, but let me read Genesis 27, uh, verse 36 to verse 37 to you right now. The Bible says, and he said, It's not he rightly named Jacob, for he had supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. Now that uh, thing happened in Genesis 25, verse 23, where Jacob took the birthright of Esau. Esau was supposed to be the firstborn in the family, meaning the inheritor of the blessing. But uh, Jacob cornered him and cornered him and uh, Esau sold that right and that place unto him. So now this is the second time where he is supposed to you know, get what he lost in the first place. But now Jacob appeared again, stole it from him. The Bible says, and behold, now he had taken away my blessing. And he said, As thou not reserved a blessing for me. Verse 37. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him your Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? Esau found himself in a place where it's like this is his second opportunity and chance to claim what rightfully belongs to him. But now the chance is thwarted because Jacob stole the opportunity the second time. Now Esau found himself in a place where he feels and started coming to the awareness that he has lost his inheritance. I don't know those who are watching me right now. You are at a place where you feel you've lost everything. You've lost all your chance of making it in life. I want to tell you, and this is the word of God unto you, you've not lost anything. You've not lost at all. You feel you've lost that marriage. You've lost that business. You've lost that job. You've lost that relationship. You, you've lost that precious thing in your life. That, that, that one chance to make it since you've lost it. I want to speak to you today. God is a God of first chance, second chance, third chance. God is a God of chances. God will come through and restore whatever has been stolen from you. In the name of Jesus, receive what you've lost. Receive what was stolen from you back hundredfold in the name of Jesus Christ. It's an embargo and a limitation that comes upon a man. But today, by the power of God, they are lifted right now. It's a cried. If you read the Bible in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 17, for you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, when the time came for him to inherit the blessing, the second opportunity came, presented himself for him to inherit the blessing, take back his place. The Bible says he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. He so cried. It was like a limitation placed on him. He cannot have this place. He cannot have these blessings no more. And no man has taken it from him. The Bible says he sought it with tears. He cried and wept. 
the Bible says he told his father, is there even not one blessing that you can give to me? The father says, I've given it to your brother. So Esau wept bitterly. Look at what his father told him in verse 37 of Genesis 27. It says, And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord. It's like a limitation and an embargo. He says, Thy Lord and all his brethren have I given to him for servant. It's like an embargo and limitation placed upon him to become a servant to his younger brother all through his life. I don't know what has happened to you that has kept you where you are or where you find yourself right now. And you are not happy. You are displeased with it. The God of heaven will pick you and put you in your rightful place. In the name of Jesus Christ. But if you read the Bible, the Bible says in Genesis 33, verse 1 to verse 9. Genesis 33, verse 1 to verse 9. Very long one there. Say, and Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, his sow came, and with him 400 men. The man had become rich. The same man who was said, that he would be a servant and sack his younger brother, became wealthy. He had now 400 men and he divided the children unto Leah, that's Jacob now, and unto Rachel, and unto the two handmaids. The Bible says in verse 3, and he put the handmaids and their children forward, and Leah and her children after and Rachel and Joseph in the most. And he passed over them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. He bowed himself seven times. This was a man who was supposed to be his servant. But now Jacob, who was supposed to be the Lord, as was said in Genesis 27 verse 37, is now bowing unto the man that he is supposed to serve. I don't know what has happened in your life. God is a God of second chance. God can do something and the ears of people around you will tingle. And I pray for you. It will happen in your life. In Jesus Christ's name. Let's read on. It says, and he came near to his brother, uh, verse 4, and he surround to meet him and embrace him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. Verse 5, and he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, who are those with thee? And he said, the children which God had graciously given that servant then uh, the ants made came uh, near they and their children and they bowed themselves. Oh my God. Everyone bowing down to him. Everyone who has said you will be slave and servant and be a pauper and be a nobody in life. They, they will come bowing down to you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will curse those who mock you to bow to you. Why? Because God will lift the limitation. You will break through. You will break off the embargo in the name of Jesus Christ. God will turn your case around so that those who are laughing at you they will come celebrating your victory and the greatness of God in your life. Through you, people will know that God can change a man's story in Jesus Christ's name. Everybody, Jacob, his wife, his children were bowing down to a man who was supposed to be their servant, who by prophecy and declaration and by position in life, in the family, is supposed to be their servant, but now they found themselves bowing down to him. Such will happen to you. Such will be your case. 
Because God will come through for you. Those who have mocked at you, God will disappoint them. Look at verse 7. My God. And Leah also with her children came near and bound themselves down. And after came Joseph near and Rachel and they bowed themselves down. My God. And he said, what meanest thou by all this drove which I met? And he said, these are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. He is now calling him Lord. My God, my God, God will come through. My God, and Esau said, I have enough, my brother. God has blessed him immensely. I have the enough now. The man who was, who was ripped of the blessing, who was ripped of the inheritance, who was made a servant, now says, I have enough. The limitation that was put upon him, he broke it. You break record in your family. That thing that no one has been able to achieve in your family, you'll be the first one to achieve it. In the name of Jesus, that limit that they say nobody in your family will pass, you will pass it, you will surpass it in the name of Jesus. You will exceed it in Jesus' name. That embargo, you break it. You break that barrier in your family. You break that barrier in your community, in your neighborhood. In the name of Jesus, you'll be the first that will stand at the place of honor. My God. And Esau said, verse 9, My God, I have enough. My brother, God will give you more than enough. More than everything that you so desire. You see, men's word are not the final say. Men's word are not the final. It is God that has the final say over any man's life. In the name of Jesus. God will give you more than enough. He said, I have more than enough, my brother. Keep that that thou hast unto thyself. It will be your story. The man became blessed. If you read again, the Bible said in Genesis 36, verse 15 and to verse 19, Esau, this same Esau became the father of chiefs. King James called them dukes. He said, now in, 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 in Genesis 36, verse 15 to verse 19, he said, these were the dukes of the sons of Esau. Dukes mean chiefs. This same man that was ripped of everything became the father of chiefs. You can turn things around. Things can be changed in a twinkle of an eye. Never conclude your life because of what you see happening around you. Because of what somebody has said. Or because of what community have said. Or because of, of the things that are happening in your family or around people, or in people's life around you. Never conclude your life based on that. God can do the impossible. Look at what happened to Cain. In Genesis 36, verse 16 to verse 19, the man was driven from the presence of the Lord, and the Bible says he went and built a city for himself. A man who carried a curse for killing his brother. He went and he built a city. Nothing is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. So what happened to Esau? There are three things I saw and picked there that I want to share with us right now in the next few minutes that I think if we apply them, it can help transform things in our life. Number one, you must learn to begin to believe God against all odds. Everything was against Esau. Everyone was against Esau. The odds were against him. But I believe Esau believed against all odds. 
he believed against all odds that he can still make it despite him not having the blessing from his father. You must learn to believe God for the impossible. It doesn't matter what is happening right now. With a man, things are impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. You must know that in your spirit. Nothing with God, nothing is impossible. Let me show you something here. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. The Bible says, God was speaking to Jeremiah. He says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? It might be hard for you, but not for God. You might not see a way out, but not for God. People may, con may conclude on your life because they feel they have all the chances and advantages. And you have none, but not for God. As a matter of fact, God thrives in situations like that. So that the glory will go to him and not man. He says, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? When you feel that your back is against the world, turn it onto God. He says, cast your cares upon him. Lay your burden at his feet. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavily laden in life and I will give you rest. With you, it may be very impossible. You may not see a way out, but not with God. So stop looking at your strength. Start asking yourself, how will I come out? You know, where do, where do I go from here? Start looking unto God. I think in Psalm 121 verse 1, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from where cometh my help. Your help comes from God, especially when your back is against the world. Is there anything too hard for me? Hallelujah. Look at Mark chapter 22. I mean, Mark 11. Verse 22, and Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Never have faith in yourself. Don't have faith in anything else. Put your faith in God. You are at a place of emptiness and dryness. No one, no friend to call. As a matter of fact, you've called everyone and everyone is declining your call. Put your faith in God. Look unto him. The Bible says, they that look unto him will not be put to shame. I pray for you. I join my faith with you in that crisis, in that situation. Let God come through for you. In the name of Jesus. Esau believed against all odds. He believed that he will make it despite the fact that all the odds are against him. Despite the fact that there's nowhere to go, nothing to do from now. He believed that he will make it. I believe he believed against hope. The Bible says Abraham believed against hope that he can become the father of many. That's the Romans. You must learn to believe God for the impossible. Believe against hope. And the God of faith will come true for you. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, they that put their eyes on him will not be put to shame. You will not be disappointed. You will not be embarrassed. Because God will come true and Put your enemy to shame instead. Put those who have written you out in life, put them to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two thing I believe that happened here, you know, is that Esau, when he saw 
that there was nothing for him again in the family. You can't stay in such place because it will further compound issues in your heart. You become frustrated every day seeing him carrying your blessings about. Carrying what should have been, you know, you know, belong to you. What should have come to you is carrying it and living, smiling, enjoying, living life. You won't be happy. It's a walk away. You must learn to walk away from poisonous people and poisonous environment. Stop capitalizing and staying in your pain and sorrows. Stop dwelling on your failures and your misfortunes. Stop dwelling on your disadvantages in life. Look up. There is something ahead for you. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, a popular verse there. It says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Failures are behind you. Defeat are behind you. Disappointment are behind you. Walk away from them. Walk away from things that does not inspire you to make progress in life. Walk away from atmosphere that poisons your vision in life. Walk away. It's a walk away from that environment. He went to seek God and sought his life. You will not fail in the name of Jesus. The God of heaven will show you favor and mercy. I don't know what you've lost. I don't know the chances you've missed. God will reproduce them in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And the last thing I noticed here in the story was this. Esau decided that no matter what has happened to him, he will pursue his determination to make it in life. You must learn to pursue your determination. First of all, you must have a determination for success, a determination for victory, a determination for anything that you want in life. There must first be a determined mind. When there is a determined mind, a way will be created for you. Where there is a will, there will definitely be a way. Esau decided to walk away and pursue his determination to make it, to have what he wanted in life. Hallelujah. You must know that sometimes pursuing your determination in life can be overwhelming, but you must not give up. It will not be all rosy and easy, but you must not give up. I believe it was not easy for Esau, but... Eventually, he made it. He came back successful. He proved his enemy wrong. Those who thought he would remain a servant, remain where they left him. Jacob left him and thought that he would come back and, and find him in the same position in life. He so proved him wrong. Why? Because one, he believed against all odds that he would make it. And number two, he walked away from the unfavorable environment and people. And three, he pursued his goal and his vision and he got it. You will get anything that you are trusting God for according to his will. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord God of heaven will come true for you. It might not be easy. The Bible told us something in Judges chapter 8. Verse 4, say, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he and the 300 men that were with him. They were faint or tired, but they still kept their pursuit. Gideon was chasing after an enemy. His men were failing, were, were falling down, tired and weak, fainting. But they kept their pursuit. If you read the full story, 
they, they got to a place where they needed help from a, a certain man. And that man told them, have you gotten the head of this man that you are chasing? When you get your head in, in your hand, come and ask for what you want. And the Bible says, Gideon says, I will come back with your head and whip you and beat you to stupor. And he did that. You must learn to prove your enemy wrong. You must learn to prove life wrong. I don't know where life has kept you or what life is saying about you or what people are saying about you. Stand your ground with God and disappoint and frustrate your evil and negative agenda in the name of Jesus. God will help you. God will help us in the name of Jesus. I close here today. I pray for you. Any limitation that life has put on you, you will exceed it. You will break it. God will give you answers that will overwhelm you and cause your heart to leap for joy and your story will turn around for good. In the name of Jesus, before this month will come to an end, God will come through for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray a blessing over your life. I pray a blessing over everything that you set your heart to do. Even as you pursue your goal and visions in life and dreams in life, I pray that God will help you, will guide you by His Spirit, not to pray in the name of Jesus. You will get what you need in God in the name of Jesus. I pray for as many who are sick, I pray for healing on your body. I pray for those who are expecting God for one breakthrough or the other. Let God answer you this week. It's your week of victory and celebration. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Check out those details for your offerings and tight. Give an offering unto God. And God will bless you mightily in Jesus Christ's name. If you are there, you are not saved. You need to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. Have mercy upon me. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you for saving me, O oh God. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. I pray for you. Your salvation is sure. The hand of God come upon you mightily. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. But I need you to write me or send me a mail so that we can teach you more ways on how to serve the Lord God Almighty. You are blessed and the glory of God rests upon you. God answer you in every area of your life. May your cup never run dry. May heaven respond to you for good and put a smile upon your face. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray against witchcraft, affliction. May they perish right now. I pray against every spell, every divination. May they be broken right now. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Stay strong and stay safe. Till I come your way next time. In Jesus Christ's name. Bye-bye.